Welcome to a short presentation of TCT, a tactical communication tool by Frontend. This is the main TCT screen. It consists of three main parts. The map window that shows the geographical data, the organization window that shows all units and equipment, and the event window that shows when planned events happen and in which order. The red line is the timeline that shows the current time. This is the city of Linkoping. From here we will build a radio link network west of town. The organization window lists all available units in the organization. Units consist of platforms such as vehicles that can carry radio equipment. To deploy a unit, just drag and drop it to the map. The events are created automatically at the time indicated by the timeline. Let's create a link between the two units. We select vehicle and type of radio on both sides. Compatible equipment are shown for these selected radios. TCT keeps track of what's needed. Now the link quality is calculated and the results are shown. The terrain profile in the middle shows that this is a bad obstructed link. The selected equipment is listed to the left and right. At the top of the window is the most important value on this screen, the service probability, here only 9%. This value should be close to 100% for a good link. If below 50%, the link is considered bad. To improve the service probability, we need to find higher grounds. Light green indicates low elevation. And brown indicates higher grounds. The problem with this radio link is that it is obstructed by the train and the trees. To improve the link quality, we can try to move the units to higher grounds or to a place where the link is not obstructed. Note that the new calculated service probability is shown in the tooltip for the link. Now we have defined a link between the two units with good enough quality, 99% service probability. When the first link has been configured, we can use the same procedure to build a whole network over time. Let's create a second radio link in the same way as we created the first one. This link has good quality from the beginning. Let's just click OK. Note that two start connection events are created for each new radio link. And when we move one of them in time, the other is moved automatically. Let's create a third link further to the west. This link is not good enough, only 48% service probability. By moving it to a new location, we get 100% service probability. Whatever obstructed the link is not obstructing it anymore. Let's change to another map view and zoom out so that we can see all three links in our planned network.
We want to expand the network into the woodlands to the south. If we don't know who should go into the woods, we can always use a template called a dummy unit. We turn on the possible links calculation to find the units that it can connect to, the orange lines. We can see that it's possible to connect with the unit to the north and to the one to the northeast, but not to the one to the northwest. If we want to deploy a unit at this location, we can replace the dummy with a real unit. and create a real radio link from the possible link. We have two options, so we select the best link with service probability 100%. Let's move the time a little forward. and add yet another link to the network by using a dummy unit and the possible link calculation. Unfortunately, we're not getting any possible link from the dummy to the other forest unit, which we wanted. So let's try to move the dummy a little bit closer and recalculate the possible links. until we get a possible link to use. At this location we see that it is possible to connect to all three units nearby. We replace the dummy with a real unit. Then we create a new radio link by selecting the best link given the available equipment and terrain. We continue to recalculate the possible links from the new unit to the nearby units. We only have one possible option. It's not great, only 59%, but we'll take it. We have now created a basic plan for a radio link network. Given the basic plan, we can fine-tune the events in time by modifying the events in the timeline. Another way to find a suitable deployment location is to calculate coverage from one point to an area. This is the Omberg mountain. On the terrain height layer, we can see the hill clearly. White is higher ground. We want to calculate the coverage from one of the units to the Omberg area. We draw a circle, defining the area of interest, and then select the type of equipment to use. We can change the resolution of the coverage circle. This affects the number of points to calculate. When clicking OK, the coverage calculation is started. Depending on different factors, such as resolution, size of the circle, and processor speed, the calculation time will change. The result is shown with an overlay where green is good coverage, yellow is questionable quality, and red is bad quality. Here we can see that behind the mountain we have no coverage.
we can use different views of the geographical data to further analyze the areas with no coverage. A mobile network changes both in time and space. Let's move one of the deployed units to the Omberg area. First we move forward in time and disconnect the current link. Then we redeploy the unit to the new location on the mountain. Since we place it in the green area, we know that we have coverage from the closest unit. So we decide to create a radio link between the units. But there is a problem. The equipment is already in use at this time. Creating a link would cause a conflict. By first disconnecting an unused link, we free up equipment at this time in the plan. Then we can try to create the link again. Now only one of the transceivers are in use at the remote unit. We can use the second one for our new radio link. The new link is of good quality, since we placed it within the green area of the coverage calculation. When we're done planning, we can generate an order document for a specific unit and time given by the timeline. The order document contains information needed by the unit to set up the real connection in the field. Even the terrain profile between the unit is included. Let's move the time to the beginning of the plan and step through the events of the current plan. The red color indicates that we have a conflict. We are redeploying a unit at the same time as it has a connected radio link. We can move the redeployment so that it will occur later in time and we can also shorten the uptime of the connection. The timing error is gone. Let's step through our plan one change at a time. Note that the planning in time and the map corresponds. Depending on the current time given by the red timeline, the map updates to show the planned situation. And there we have our plan, time dynamic and mobile network. TCT has much more to offer than covered in this short presentation. For example, interference calculation of the network, radio nets, and dynamic changes to the organization. For more information about TCT or a live web demo, please contact us at tct at frontend.se or visit our webpage at www.frontend.se. Thank you for watching.